Right, welcome back everybody. Today something a little bit different. I've been buying a few things this week, so I thought I'd bring you along and show you what I've been purchasing and what the plans are and what we're going to be doing with them. So let's take a look and see what we've got. Right then, so as you can see, I've got a few mowers, two either side of me. I've got my TZR uh, exhaust pipe and I've also bought a rear cowling. This is for the um, Suzuki GSXR s rad because this just covers the rear seat. It didn't have that. And the actual chap that I actually bought this off was the bloke that I actually bought the bike from. So it didn't come with the bike when I bought the bike because he didn't know where it was, but he did find it at a later date and he did list it for sale. And he only wanted uh, cheap money for it. So I did buy it just to go back with the bike. And as you can see here, I've actually bought myself, uh, it's brand new, but it's uh, second hand. The person that bought it had it for two years. It's just sat in the garage doing nothing. And it's actually a ladder scaffold tower. So, but you can actually take the board away and it becomes a a, a frame ladder, or you can actually can stick both of these ladders together via the hooks that it has here and actually make yourself one big long ladder. So first of all, I've got this um, quad cast here. And this is a 48 centimeter cut. Um, the self-drive isn't working. I actually paid £10 for this. So it's a, a nice wide cut lawnmower. It's the one handle, does all four wheels height adjustment. It actually comes with a bottle of uh, some good grade engine oil there as well. So that would probably cost you a tenner in the shop as well. So it's basically a free mower at the end of the day. I'm not sure if there is a belt on this. I haven't actually looked at it yet. The chap said it was running. So we'll have a go looking at that in a minute. Then I'll pick this one up. This one was actually for sale. And the lady that I bought it from was actually selling the scaffold tower as well. The, the, the issue with this is the self-drive is non-existent because there's no belt on it but that wasn't bothering it's a it's a nice light mower to push at the end of the day anyway so i'll probably just out this as a push mower i won't go down the road of spending money to uh, make it a self-drive again i'll leave all the running gear there so it's up to the next owner but the reason she actually sold this was in the advert the, that she was selling she put a picture of the mower up and then she put a picture of the mower just looking like like that just looking at the exhaust pipe and in the ad she said uh, please study the second picture which would would have been a picture like that and uh, a little arrow pointed to this and she said this uh, lawnmower is up for sale for spares or repairs as there seems to be coming some smoke coming out of here so quite natural for smoke to come out of an exhaust so what she was probably on about is that the mower's probably been on its side and there's probably a bit of oil in the exhaust and it was a bit smoky so but as you can see, someone has actually been in here because the telltale sign of the air filter was around the wrong way, the casing. Yeah, I wasn't worried. It, she said it did run, but it smokes. And coming along onto the scaffold tower, as you can see, I did get me uh, TZR can sandblasted. But as you can see, there is a bit of damage on it there, which we didn't notice on the pipe when it was painted. So I will still go with this pipe because they're really hard to find these pipes now. So. I will get a bit of colour on this and as I say this I believe you can get these uh, recanned so I think you just dr drill these uh, little spot welds off and uh, that's just like a tin sleeving stainless there so oh, there's a chap in uh, not far from me about 20 miles down the road so I might get him to have a look at this see if we can get that re-sleeved I say I'm not too bothered about that dent at the minute so once it's painted, it will take the eye off it again. But I say eventually, if I do find a good second hand can, if it's at the right money, I'll buy it. So that's the uh, rear cowling, I say. So that would be going with the GSXR. And I'll just skip this Izzy a minute. This is the Honda, the Hater 41. And as you can see, we've got a nice uh, shine on there again. I've give that a cut back and a polish with just the drill bit. And it just brings up uh, the mower lovely. I mean, you can't get these sort of scratches out here. There's nothing I can do with that front bit. So, but this mower was like a dull green. If we just take a look at my dad's one over here, it was, this is what it started off like. That's what it looked like there. It's just a flat green and uh, it's not very good. So just by doing a five minutes, just going around it with a drill bit, we've come up with a result like that. And that, will just boost your sale no end. So we'll just push this one out of the way a minute. 
and I don't know if you do remember in my last about four video, five videos ago, I actually done a Honda Izzy up where I powder coated it. We done a full refurbishment on it. I'll try and put a link to that at the top right of that video. And uh, I've actually got this one come in. It's had a couple of uh, repairs there in the bars, as you can see. And the chap that actually bought them are Honda Izzy that are fully refurbished in silver. If I can find a picture of it, I'll stick it in the video now. But the chap that actually bought that had this one and he's had this one for, I think he said he's had it for about 10 years and it's never letting down. It still runs and does everything it should do. But once he saw mine online, he said I wanted it. And when we got chatting when he came to pick it up and he told me about this one he's got here. He actually asked me if I could refurbish this one to the standard that I did, the, the one that he bought off me. So he's actually paying me to refurbish this. The actual body, it's worth doing. I'll say he's clocked up a few miles on it. It's a bit sentimental to him now. So he wants to keep hold of it, but he wants me to get it looking like he did, looking like I did with the other one that I sold a few weeks ago. So what we'll do now is we'll just go ahead and get these mowers, see if they start. I was told they did when I bought them. I haven't tried them yet, so we'll give them a go and see what we can find. Right then, so we'll just start with this old Briggs. Right, I, that is well overfilled that. I'm only going to give it a quick fire just to see if it fires. But that's... I say well overfilled, but we'll just see if it fires. And that sounds lovely, that, but I'll just show you on the uh, dipstick if I can. I don't know if that'll pick up on there. Let me just uh, so, as you can see, the maximum mark is just there on the arrow. And as you can see, it's right up there. So we've got all that travel there, too much. And that's what I mean, people don't realise. Putting too much oil in, it's just like running a machine without oil. You can just cause as much damage. So the oil's good and clean. And there's half a bottle of that in here. So I presume the other half of this bottle is in there, on top of whatever was probably in it. So I will take that out. Again, we'll just have a quick look at this one. And these mowers haven't been tipped up, they've, they've, they have been clean, sitting up the right way. Again, this one is just overfilled. So, as you can see, the top mark's there, and we're just at the back of that arrow. So, it's probably half of what it should be filled. Again, we'll give it a quick fire, just to see if it does run. Good, again, good clean oil in it. So, that's two mowers with nice clean oil in. Uh, see if this one goes. So it did go first pull, but as you can see, that's the issue there that the woman was obviously on about. So I can't see you. And it's got a bit of a, a pop in there as well. So before I do leave that to run and burn out, then the oil that's in that exhaust, I will drop that uh, oil level down to where it wants to be. Because I say, you don't want to be running the machine up with overloaded oil in it. So that's lovely, two runners there. I say, this, this Honda is not mine, but I will just show you it running. Is the fuel on or off? The fuel's on. I don't know if there's any fuel in it, to be honest with you. But I say, this will be getting stripped down anyway. So if it wasn't running, it's, it's getting the, the works. So we just put it on the choke. Little puff of smoke there. That sounds lovely, that engine. Could do with a bit of speeding up though, it's a bit slow. That slow speed spot on there, but the fast with a little notch more on the stick over there. Well, that's lovely, that. And we've got this old 41 here. This is just gonna have no petrol in it, I don't think. Let's just see if we can catch anything off the bottom there. And uh, this one won't rattle about a bit because I haven't got this lid uh, fastened down.
and there we go. So I think what I'm going to do in the rest of this video is we'll probably have a get this one cleaned up. We'll get it uh, all the deck clean, get all this old oil off. We'll get the extra oil dropped out of it. We'll get it cleaned up, and hopefully we can put this out for sale. For what I'm going to put this up for, what it will sell for, we'll pay for this whole lineup, obviously apart from the Izzy. So this little uh, plastic cheap, it's a GGP Italy. And uh, I've never had one of these before. It's a uh, 2013 model SP15S. So again, I say I haven't got any belts knocking about. I might just have a quick look online, see how much a drive belt is. If it's uh, gonna be much more than a tenner, I don't think I'll go bother with that route because uh, I don't wanna be putting too much money into it for what it's cost me. But if I, I can sell it as a push mower, it's what the lady's been using it as. as I pushed it around from the car, it's nice and light. So if the new owner did want to stick a belt on it, I could always say there's a link there for it. But um, obviously I'd get more money for it as a push mower, but I'd only get an extra 10 or 15 quid. So I'm not too sure. I'll have a look. If it's worth it, I'll do it. If not, not to worry. It'll just be converted to a push mower. And hopefully we can have a look at this one and see what's going on with this drive. There is a belt on there, I can see. So it might just be tensioned. But I think when someone was pushing it, I think the wheel was locking up, the back left wheel was locking up, so. Right everyone, so it's blinking all out here. I've had to come and sit in the shade for a bit. Uh, as you can see, I pulled this one out, the uh, GGP Italy. It's actually a Suffolk punch. I didn't realize it's actually stamped, stamped Suffolk punch on the bag, but on the uh, ID tag, it's a GGP Italy. I've just phoned up Moa Magic. They're literally down the road from me, about 15 minutes. They can source me a belt for £7.98. So for the sake of eight quid, I've ordered myself a belt for it and I'm going to stick it on. Then it'll be a fully functional uh, self-drive lawnmower. I say that, I say I've gone ahead and ordered it. It still might have a gearbox issue yet. I could have just gone under there and checked that. But if there is a problem there, I'll just keep the belt as a spare for another mower. So it's always good to keep some spares in stock. But what I thought I'd do is I've just drained the oil out, out of the old uh, self-drainer and I've just got myself some uh, G101 here so I'm just going to give this a good spray down this deck and it's got a bit of oil on it where it's been running and shooting oil out the exhaust so we'll just get quite a lot of this uh, bed grass off and uh, oil it's good stuff this G101 I mix it at a 50-50 ratio with uh, warm water. So now that's on there, I'm just going to go ahead and give this deck a bit of a wipe over. I say I'm not going to get best results because it is a, a plastic deck and they do fade off a while. It's thick with grease under that exhaust. I say it's... Uh, a bit awkward to film out here at the minute, I'd say it's really hot and it's just trying to keep in the shade and keeping it a bit bright enough so you can still see on the camera as well. So I will have to wait a few days now to get this one up for sale because I say they've got to order the, the belt from the, the main supplier because it's not one they carry on the shelf. So it won't be going up for sale today as if, as if like I planned. I think I might stick the old uh, hater up for sale today. Get something cut for sale anyway. Eh? I say it's not a bad little mower. It'll do someone a good turn. Oh. That sticker's coming off. Get all the crap out from under that and we'll stick a bit of a uh, little bit of glue on that later. And the deck's not in bad shape. There's not no cracks or nothing in it. But some of these can pick these mowers up, these plastic ones, and they do have cracked uh, decks, but this one ain't too bad. I just like to give them a bit of a clean before I start doing any work on these machines, just so I'm not introducing any dirt into uh, the engine when I'm taking the carbs off and stuff like that. So that'll do for a basic clean. That's soaking them wheel arches. Underneath of the deck is really good. The blade ain't too bad either. It doesn't look like it's done a lot of work, to be honest with you. There's no grass build up under there. And uh, 
the blade, I'll say, does look uh, good on that. I will put an edge on it. But first of all, I want to take this air filter off. I don't think I'll do the carbon diaphragm in this one because uh, I do believe once we've had it running and cleaned that oil out of that exhaust, it will be uh, all right. There's no uh, issues with hunting on it, so I don't see the point of uh, changing it just for the sake of it if it's uh, running nice. So I'm just going to get myself a screwdriver now and then we can lift that air filter off and uh, have a look under there and give it a bit of a clean. Right, so let's take a look at the state of this air filter. The plug and the oil look good. So I'm not sure. So does the filter look. So I'm not sure if the lady has attempted. It is an aftermarket one because it's got not got the Briggs on it. So I think the lady has attempted to, to give it a bit of a service. But she's just overfilled it with oil. And that's what's uh, caused her uh, issue there. So everything's working there as it should. So I'm just going to whisk this blade off. I should say it's probably a 14 mil. Is it? A bit tight. Let's put that there just a caution. So there we go. Little 14 mil. I'm just going to run in the log cabin, give this a bit of a sharpen. I say it's not a bad blade to be honest with you. So let me do that and I'll be back with Just stick that back up there on its locating pins. Put your gun to forward, start it off with this. Right, get that lock. There we go, so we can take that off now. I'm happy with that, blade sharp and it's clean under there. Just whip this plug out. Then we can advertise that we have uh, checked the blade. Not the blade, the plug. And I might just give it a clean if it needs one. Not too bad, but I will just run it on the uh, wire brush just to clean that up. Right then, so that's had that a nice good clean up now. So we'll just put that plug back in. And uh, just nip that up like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to let that run up for... 15 minutes or so just to let that smoke clear and while I'm doing that letting that run I'm just going to go off in the background and just get that hater pulled forward and I'm going to give that a quick little once over so I can get that one part of a sale today and uh, this will be ready to go next week and I still need to check on the Qualcast over there with that gearbox I don't know if I'm going to do that today I say it's really hot out here and it's getting a bit uh, too much really so I'll probably uh, run this one up. I'll get that one checked over. And once I've done that, I'll come back to you. Right, as you can see folks, that's over there running. That's been going for about 10 minutes now. And there's no smoke on that at all. And it's running lovely. It hasn't missed a beat. So no need to do that carburetor diaphragm on that. That's running happy days. So I'm just gonna leave that now. So I'm just gonna sharpen the blade on this hater. And then uh, this one will be ready to go. It's had the service. So I'll come back to you once I've sharpened this blade and, uh, and we'll probably call that a wrap on this video. Right, so I brought you back out the front now. I just thought I'd show you the Mondeo. Hopefully we'll have a video out on this on uh, the weekend showing you us cutting this, cutting this paintwork back and polishing it. But as you can see, we've got a nice finish there. There was a big scratch there, if you can remember, and the dents are totally gone now. So really happy with that. Um, we've just got a bit of uh, blending to do along this line here. So we'll rub that down and there's a blend here to do. But as you can see, we've got a nice finish on that. The car does need a good wash. But hopefully, again, as I say, we'll show you this on Saturday. So I think I'm going to leave it here for this little video. If you haven't already, hit that like button and the subscribe. And also, don't forget, also we do the Project Man merchandise. There's a link down below for that. So anyway, until next time, <laughs> we'll see you about.